Live from the Dunkin' Latte Lounge. Hey, yo, what's going on? I'm Josh Martinez. Welcome back to our Dunkin' Lounge with our guest, Jake Scott. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Everything is good. Welcome back to New York City. Thank you. Greatest city on the planet. Greatest city on earth. Damn right. (laughs) Uh, But you're originally from, is it Fayetteville, Arkansas? Wow, yes. Fayetteville, Arkansas. Go Hogs. So I actually went to Arkansas for the first time like three weeks ago. No, you didn't. Where'd you go? Fayetteville. Really? Yeah, that's why, why, that's why this is notable, by Wait, the way. <laughs> why? Uh, my cousin got married out okay. there. So she went to a Sassafras winery, which uh, is... That is five minutes from my parents' house. So you, Yeah, so I we went there. Yes. And uh, I stayed uh, off of one of the interstates in a really nice hotel. Right. Uh, but for nightlife, I was like, we need to find a campus. <laughs> we need to go downtown, and we need to bar hop. And as a Puerto Rican kid who grew up in the hood, it was interesting. <laughs> Well, it's <laughs> it is a very one note thing where it's country music, honky tonk vibe, and it's great. Dixon Street, I'm sure you. It went was to Dixon. The, that's where we went to. That's we went to Dixon. Spl- that's the only spot. I loved it because the prices were very different than oh New my York God. City. Oh Dude, a shot's like three dollars. Yeah, Amazing. parking was very affordable. Anywhere you want. And I was that close to getting on a mechanical bull. You didn't do it? No. Come on, that's Yeehaw. That's a great place, Yeehaw. Yes, that is it. Wow, this, he knows his hometown. Dude, there's there's five places to go in Fayetteville. <laughs> I, I grew up there. I know it. So growing up in Fairville, what were your uh, your musical influences throughout your career, uh, throughout your childhood, before your actual music career? Well, good question. My, I think the thing that really first got me going was the band Hanson. You remember them? Mbop. Yes. Classic. The hair inspired. I got the hair. It's, it's really I'm manifesting this in my <laughs> in my later in life. But I, I fell in love with drums through that, and then when I was a teenager, I found John Mayer, and then I sold the drums, bought a guitar, very quickly realized I'm never going to play the guitar like John Mayer. So I just focused in on the songwriting side of things, and I fell in love with, you know, Coldplay and John Mayer and people like that, and, and then the folk kind of revival with like the Fleet Foxes and Lumineers and all that stuff, and I started kind of like leaning into that, and that was really how I got started, and, and it's just kind of been an evolution from there. So you play multiple instruments. Yes. Um, what would you say is your favorite to perform in front of a crowd? Probably the guitar. Because on the guitar, like, I kind of can just, like, close my eyes and not think about it because, like, I my you know. But when I'm playing the piano, I have to, like, really focus because, you know, I'm not a great piano player. But I started out as a drummer. That's what I did for the first, you know, ten years of my life. But I don't really ever have many moments to kick Bruno off the drums and, and get back there. Well, what I was going to say was I think we sh- you should do something at a show where you just, for, like, ten minutes, it's a solo, <laughs> but it's, it's you solo. on all the instruments. Like, literally, you on the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> and then get the crowd clapping, so you keep a beat going, and then you get on yeah. the piano and do it, and then you rock out with like a three-minute raw drum solo. Yeah. <laughs> Let everybody go crazy, and then Just you go into She's Not You, and then everybody goes even more crazy. Full send, man. It's going to be sick. See? You yeah. know what? You Next guys are tour. all fired. All Next tour. Yeah, yeah. You, I'm hiring <laughs> you. You're coming out with me. Let's do this. Nah. I, <laughs> talentless. Talentless. Uh, when did you discover uh, that this could be something that you can actually make a career and go full bore into it? Yeah, so when I was in college, I started writing songs just for fun. And what college was that? University of Arkansas. Hogs. They lost me a lot of money so far this season because I bet <laughs> with, like, oh, I got family man, there. I don't even want to talk <laughs> about this. Gosh, it's bad. It's been a tough year. Um, but, yeah, so when I was in college, I started writing songs for fun. Long story short, I got to record those songs and just put them out on iTunes, and I was like, my mom and my best friends will buy this EP. And like it just caught a weird bit of traction and like got in the iTunes top five and got in the billboard charts and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, maybe I should like do this, you know? And it was just all, it all happened quickly. But then I kind of like within six months time, I moved from Arkansas to LA, started working full time as a songwriter and a producer, primarily for other people because I just kind of got sucked into that vortex. And then through that process, really just like, honed a skill set on like how to write songs and how to produce songs and then I started doing it for myself and um, that was really kind of like the beginning point to being like oh maybe I could actually turn this dream into some bit of a reality I didn't ever expect to it actually to work but I'm glad it did do you find yourself uh, when writing a song do you find it more comforting when you know it's for someone else than it is for you or do you find it more comforting when you write it for yourself knowing it's going to be for you Great question. I think, I think nowadays I find more comfort knowing it's for me because I know it's a lot easier for me to write from a place where it's like, 
this is my story. Like, these are my details. This is what I experienced. This is exactly what I know. Because when you're writing for someone else, you're trying to get in their head and make it feel authentic for them. But for me, it's like I know what feels authentic and I know how to get it there. Even if I can't necessarily explain that to the people I'm necessarily like writing with, if I'm co-writing, I know that by the end of the song, I can I can eventually get it there. You know, so it's it's a bit more of a comfort blanket. You've worked with so many different people in your career. Um, who would you say is kind of one of the more fun people to work with? And I'm not saying necessarily talented, but just fun where it just doesn't seem like work. Oh man. And yes, I'm putting you on the spot to select one. So <laughs> when one you watch this back, <laughs> well, I gotta say, most recently, uh, my my boy Russell Dickerson. We have a song right now uh, called She Likes It. And any time we've worked together, we've only written together twice, but we just have so much fun, and it, it doesn't feel like work. It just feels like we're hanging, and then by the end of the day, it's like, oh, this song is sick. Let's, let's do this, you know? So definitely right now, Russell's been a blast to work so with. So you're currently on tour. Uh, what's been the most mind-blowing aspect of the tour? Because you're, you're obviously starting out, so things are, are still relatively new and fresh, but I'm sure there's a time where you stop and are like, oh, shit, this is really happening. Have you had those moments yet? Every night, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's crazy for me to show up in a place, like, for example, our last show was in D.C. two nights ago, and, like, I'd never even been to Washington, D.C. until I played my first show there, and, like, showing up in a room that's packed full of people who are screaming every word to these songs that I've written, I'm just like, what is happening? Like, this can't be real. And then there are moments in the show when I, like, step back and let them sing. And it's it really is just like a pinch yourself kind of thing where it's just like, I don't, this is out of body for me. This just feels crazy. I still haven't ever wrapped my head around it. So over 500 million streams combined, I believe, and you're smiling very big right now. I got to say, you have a nice smile, by the way. <laughs> very you nice do smile. too, man. Thank you. Like, I need to say that. It's very infectious. <laughs> like, I'm smiling watching you smile. So you have a very <laughs> nice smile. And I'm not hitting on you. I uh, well, I mean, I'm here for a couple more days. There you go. How you doing? <laughs> so you have a very nice smile. Thank you. Um, what what keeps you going? Because not every let's keep it real. Not every day is this mind blowing. Oh my God, this is an extremely great moment. You're gonna have your downs. But what kind of keeps you level headed to bring you back down um, to a surface level, or even bring you up? Do you have a family member, friends, anybody that you can reach out to to kind of even you out? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I would say my family, my wife and our daughter, um, who just turned one year old, one year old, not one year old. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Which, by the way, now she's just one, and that's it. Don't <laughs> be that guy that's like oh, no. 16 and a half Done. months. Done, done. If you want to know more, I'll tell you, but I'm definitely <laughs> never going to be that guy. <laughs> Good. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just so – because you're right. It is very up and down, and, like, this career is so crazy of, like, you feel like you got to do this and that, and it's just easy to get caught up in this rat race of all the things you should be doing better. And it's really nice to, like, even after a, an incredible show, to be able to get on FaceTime and, like, see my daughter, see my wife, and just be like, this is what matters. This is real. Even though that was great, that was only 90 minutes of my life, this is real. And that just keeps my feet on the ground as, as much as I you know, can. I try to and, and try to stay focused on the things that matter and keep everything else in perspective, and that really helps a lot. I think every songwriter has those random moments at 3 in the morning on a Tuesday where you wake up and you're like, idea for a song. Well, how do you handle that? Is it as quick as a note on your phone where the next morning you look at it and you're like, well, did I type this shit? So many times. Liter but for me, it's always like a melody. So I have to like try to whisper sing it into my phone with zero reference of like the beat or the tone. So I'll listen back in the morning and it's just like, and I'm like, that is garbage. I have no idea what this is. But I will say there's a couple times when I'm like, this is really good. I have to go into the kitchen sing it into the phone, and like a few songs that are on this album coming up are from that. Great segue. Let's talk about the <laughs> album. Uh, what are you most excited about? Aside from just getting it out, what are you most excited about? Is it a song? Is it just a process? What excites you the most when talking about the album? I mean, the thing that I'm the most excited about is this is my first like debut album. I've put out a lot of singles, but I've never put out an album, a full body of work. And I think the thing that I am so excited about now having gotten to play a, a lot of these songs live on this tour is seeing like there is a connection between I, th I think the thing I was chasing with this album was the feeling of nostalgia and kind of the magic of 
falling in love and the and even sometimes the the heartbreak and the the heaviness of that but really what i wanted to feel and i wanted the listener to feel was this through line of nostalgia and it really like even when i'm playing the songs live i f- i feel that there's something happening whenever we're all like singing these songs back to each other and i'm so excited for people to hear the whole thing so the song now she's not you right What's that songwriting process like? Was it just you? Was it a team? Was it a sit down and saying, this is what I want to write about, let's go? Or is it a 3 a.m. on a Tuesday, just start <laughs> going? <laughs> that one wasn't 3 a.m. But no, I was writing that song with two other guys, uh, Neil Ormandy and Aaron Kanata, and they're both incredibly talented songwriters. And it was our first day to ever work together, and we started just playing some chords on a guitar and singing the melody that's the chorus. And we were all like, whoa, this is cool. And then we were talking about how, like, get th- with the through line of nostalgia and kind of being like, what if, you know, you had this person who was, like, the one and everything after that, you will always be ruined because you're going to be comparing everyone else to this person and kind of, like, sitting in that moment. And you haven't even, like, processed it and gotten to where it's like, oh, now I've moved on. It's like, no, I, I'm trying to move on, but I haven't. And this is the feeling of that. And we all kind of collectively resonated with that and wrote that song. So you'll be performing that in just a little bit. But before we do that, uh, we are in the Duncan Lounge. Yep. So I'm going to put you on the spot. If you needed to sit down with any artist, dead or alive, for an hour and just sit at a Duncan, have a coffee, maybe even a glazed donut, uh, what artist would you choose to pick their brain, dead or alive? Anyone? Go. There was definitely a glazed donut involved. But I got to say Bob Dylan. Just because, like, I'm so fascinated as a songwriter, I'm so fascinated by how he is so prolific and profound in the way he writes songs. And that may be kind of a cliche answer, but I really would love to just sit down and try to understand his brain for an hour. And I definitely wouldn't scratch the surface, but I would try. <laughs> I was literally about to say, just based on his writing, you're not going to get very far. I wouldn't get there, <laughs> but I would try. So what can we expect uh, from you, not only for the rest of this tour, uh, not only even even for the upcoming album, but from beyond that, for the rest of your time making music, what can we expect from you as an artist? I mean, I my goal is to keep pushing myself to be better and to write better music and write more authentically and hopefully everything else just keeps growing with it and the tours get bigger and the songs get better and everything just keeps growing and it's going to be a lot of fun. The evolution of Jake Scott. Evolution. That's the, that's the name of his first autobiography, <laughs> by the way. One more time, Jake Scott, thank you so much. We thank appreciate you. you. Let's get into some music, huh? Go good. Hogs. Yes, Go Hogs. This first song, we just I just released this less than a month ago. And it's called Good Day. So we're going to start it out with some fun. Cup of coffee with the sunrise Got this morning going just right No plans and it's so nice, so nice Oh, Lord knows it, it's been a long week Whole world's been a leaning on me Right here, it's right where I want to be It's gonna be a good day A good vibe, order in a little Postmates and my ties Turn the music up on a long drive sunshine it's gonna be a good day a good time as long as i got your hand in mine would you want to live any other way wake up every morning look at you and say hey it's gonna be a good day nah 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 it's gonna be a good day Should turn up both of our phones Go anywhere we want to go If you want me, I'm yours, baby Just say so Whoa, Lord knows it It's been a long week Whole world's been leaning on me Right here's right where I want to be It's going to be a good day A good vibe Ordering a little Postmates and my ties Turn the 
music up on a long drive. Make a little love in the sunshine. It's going to be a good day, a good time. As long as I got your hand in mine, I wouldn't want to live any other way. Wake up every morning, look at you and say, hey, it's going to be a good day. Nah, 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 nah. It's going to be a good day. next song is brand new. It's going to be the title track of my upcoming album that's coming out next year called Lavender. And this song is called Lavender. And you're hearing it first, iHeartRadio. Summertime group text invites Didn't know what it'd lead to Lead to The blue skies and ocean are beautiful But I came here to see you To see you And you know Try to see this close as I could. Sunshine and your smile and nothing like anything I'd see, I'd see. Never in my life had I known something so completely. Oh, you know, oh, I tried to see.
Suddenly my plans were open Didn't have a doubt I knew Anywhere that you go I'm going to So the last two songs, those are both going to be on my, my album, Lavender, which is coming out next year. I'm so excited about those. Um, but I'm going to play an old song for you now. This song um, is called Working For You. This dream isn't my trigger, it's you and me in that Polaroid picture I keep on my dash. I see every day, tried dozens of times to throw it away in this smoke. It won't be my killer, it's hope that I might finally get rid of this ghost. It follows me around in a little reminders all over this town and I know I shouldn't be calling this late I lost control and I hate the way I can't stop it once it begins I'm sorry I couldn't resist I swear this will be the last time and I hear you're doing just fine. I've done everything I can do. Please tell me what's working for you. And words, they don't mean nothing if I don't pick myself up. I can't count all the nights I broke down to my friends, begging for help just to fall back again. I know I shouldn't be calling this late. I lost control and I hate the way I can't stop it once it begins. I'm sorry I couldn't resist. Swear this will be the last time And I hear you're doing just fine I have done everything I can do Please tell me what's working for you Did you reach out for help or do it all by yourself? Did you forgive me by falling for somebody else? I just need to know, and I promise I'll leave you alone. Cause I know I shouldn't be calling this late. I lost control, and I hate the way I can't stop it once it begins. I'm sorry I couldn't resist. I swear this will be the last time And I hear you're doing just fine But I've done everything I can do Please tell me what's working for you oh, Tell me what's working for you It's working for you. To see more videos like this, check out DuncanLatteLounge.com. And if you're posting on social, use the hashtag DuncanLatteLounge.